completing the square, let, let's just talk about, in general, what we're up against. And this is a special product you should know. And if not, you better relearn it. The binomial square. Or binomial squared. Look, x plus b quantity squared. Yeah, you can FOIL this out, but if you're FOILing it out, then you, then you really don't understand the special product, and you really want to understand the special product, um, because that's the key to completing the square. You've got to know that like the back of your hand. I'll FOIL it out this one time, and, and I'll never do it again. This is something you need to own. <clears throat> Distribute the x through, you get x squared plus bx. And then distribute the B through, and this is equivalent to the FOIL method. I just would rather you thought of it in terms of distributing each term in this product through, or in this factor through each term in that product. That's that's what FOIL is trying to do, but it's just very specific. And this, using the distributive law correctly is the more general way. So B times X plus B times B. Look, there's two BXs there. B times B is B squared. So X squared <coughs> plus 2BX, excuse me, plus B squared. You just need to know that. You need to be able to go straight from here to there with no hesitation. Okay? Memorize that thing. This is this is like, but I don't think a class should be a lot of memorization. Look, you gotta memorize the alphabet to, to put words together, don't you? This is your alphabet, all right? And, and the, by the same token, x minus b quantity squared is x squared minus 2bx plus b squared. Now, what we need to do here is somehow go from the x squared minus 2bx or the x squared plus 2bx to find what the b squared is. Okay, so somehow, come down here, come down below, somehow, x squared plus 4x is the same as x squared plus 2bx. Hmm, that's like saying the 4x is your 2bx. Hmm, let's see, I'm going to solve this for b, just divide by 2x. Well, typically, we'll skip that step, but that tells you that B must be equal to 2. And so B squared is 2 squared, and 2 squared is 4. Okay? Find B. Then you're going to use the B squared. Now here's the short way to find the B. You, all you got to do is take that 4 divided by 2 and then square. That's the B squared that we want. Okay. So rewrite that, that line above. Continuing. Um, X squared plus 4X. Leave some room. Minus 7 equals 0 again. But you've done that. 4 over 2 and then 2 squared. Add 2 squared on the left. And balance it with a plus 2 squared on the right. Call that a 4. But leave it as a leave it as a two squared for gosh sakes, because that leads itself right to the next step, which is take the square off the x and take the square off the two, and put x plus two quantity squared on the left side, and now I've got a minus seven 
equals four. Okay, and now x plus two quantity squared minus seven equals four. I'm gonna isolate the x plus two squared by adding seven to both sides. And now x plus two take the square root of both sides. I'm going to show this step and be careful about your style. You might like your style and cling to it, but it gets you into trouble because it's not a generic style. It's a style you develop trying to keep a high school teacher happy or an intermediate algebra teacher happy and you kind of lost sight of some some important stuff. Now the the square root of the square Check this out. Square root of the square is the absolute value. Of the principal square root. This statement is certainly true, and I usually skip that step after I've done my first 100 and I've done my first 10,000. Um, but anyway, the square root of this thing is the absolute value of the x plus 2. The square root of quantity x plus 2 quantity squared is the absolute value of the quantity x plus 2. And how do you solve an absolute value equation? Well, either the absolute, either x plus two is square root of eleven, or the x plus two equals minus the square root of eleven, and then we usually compress this to saying x plus two equals plus or minus the square root of eleven. And I tried to sidestep that one when, we, when I discussed absolute values. I don't want you into that habit except here. Here it's okay um, because you, you'll be skipping that and I just want you to know that basically all that stuff I did in the middle you should be able to go straight to here. from this top line. And a lot of people, I've even seen tutors in the math lab didn't understand that the, the square root of the square, the square root of this square is the absolute value of the x plus two. They didn't know how to explain it. And so every time they, they you'd see a square root come up, they'd, they'd pluck stick a plus or minus in there. No, square root doesn't necessarily lead to a plus or minus, but here it does because the square root of the of the square is the absolute value. Okay. And let me just convince you of that. Square root of three squared equals three, right? What's the square root of minus three squared? That's the square root of minus three times minus three, which is positive nine. The square root of 9 is 3. Behaves square root of x squared behaves like absolute value of x. It is the absolute value of x. If I stick a positive 3 in there, it spits out 3. If I stick a minus 3 in there, it spits out a positive 3. That's exactly what absolute value does. And so it should be no mystery why I've got an absolute value here. But the long, the short of it is that the x plus 2 squared equals 11 leads directly to x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 11. Get rid of the square, put a plus or minus square root on the right side. Boom. Done. And so the next step, of course, is subtracting 2 
from both sides, so minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 11. And it's I accept this kind of answer. Whoop. As a set answer, the plus or minus, that works for showing both of them. Okay. And now a little added bonus at no extra charge. This says x squared plus 4x minus 7 actually factors into x minus 2 plus the square root of 11 times x minus 2 minus the square root of 11. The factor theorem works for everything. Okay, This is very cool. You're, you'll, you'll see a ton of this in uh, chapter 3. I really like showing this to you early. When you find those zeros, that, that is tied directly to how this thing factors. And it doesn't factor in a conventional way like they taught you in intermediate algebra, but it does factor. It's just it's got factors that involve irrationals in the terms, which is pretty awesome.